is the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Beta. We've been waiting an eon since the gameplay demos from Anime Expo and so on to see the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Beta and why it would be good for Bandai as well as the players. Hello everyone, it's me, it's Steve Oji here, back to more Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And what I wanted to talk about today is the Dragon Ball Sparking Zero Beta. Now, I want to take a lot of things into account, mostly how past Dragon Ball games have all had betas or demos of some sort, excluding Kakarot, but that is an entirely single-player game, so that does make sense. But there is a lot of things that comes into a Dragon Ball Sparkings or a beta, such as, you know, player demand, how the past Dragon Ball games did it. Will they have game improvements that they can do from the beta test that, you know, players will obviously give to the community back? bug fixes and a network test, because that is very important. We do not want Sparking Zero to go the way of Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. But player demand for a beta is at an all-time high thanks to the gameplay demo showcases all the way back from Anime Expo, as well as the online gameplay showcases that Bandai Namco have shown us of Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And again, I prefer if we get the beta earlier rather than later. I don't mind the beta being closer towards the game's launch, but this will become a major issue for some of the other points I want to talk about later in the video. But for now, when it comes to how needy the players are for Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, I included, we would prefer a beta at the earliest convenience. That way, it, it gives them time to, again, obviously, patch certain issues out, etc., etc. We'll go into those when we can. But for now, the player demand is at an all-time high because all we've done, all we've done, is seen a Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. But we've not got to interact with any of it, basically. This is much different to other Dragon Ball games where they are they are not this brave for other Dragon Ball games. They don't show as much, so it's a lot harder for people to be like, oh, I want to play the game as soon as possible, right? I want to play the game right now. Because people don't have a, a perfect idea as to how the game is, you know, going to look when it's done. Uh, this game, we can pretty much envision entirely how the game is going to look now because we've seen that much of it. So let us play it. Pretty much every Dragon Ball game also has had some sort of demo or beta. If I'm just going backwards in the timeline, um, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot didn't release with a demo. I need to point that out. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot did come out in 2020 and it got a demo in 2021. I know that sounds extremely weird, but I think that demo is so people could actually test the game before they wanted to buy it, rather than the usual demos which come out before the game actually releases and allows people to experience the game, you know, in a kind of less impure way. Um, a, more of a pre-release version of a game. But the Dragon Ball Z Kakarot demo was after the game came out, so it's technically a pretty refined look at the game. It's, a, it's something that makes people buy the game in post, right? But Sparking Zero, I imagine, is going to go for an approach where they want people to be rushing into the game basically when it comes out, especially of how much they've shown. They really want people to be into the game, so they're not going to do a Kakarot. They are probably going to have a demo before the game comes out. And even before Kakarot, we had Dragon Ball Fighters, which had betas. We had Xenoverse, which had betas. And yes, even you, Dragon Ball The Breakers. That game also had a beta. Want to know what else had demos? The game before Xenoverse, which was Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Even Dragon Ball Z Raging Blast has a demo on the Xbox 360. You can still get so, um, every Dragon Ball game has had, like, a demo for the most part, right? Basically, the moment online gameplay started becoming a major thing, or at least downloading games online, playing games online, beta codes, demo codes, ETC, right? Ever since those were kind of popularized, every Dragon Ball game from that point has had, like, a demo or a beta. So, I'm going to be quite optimistic and say Sparking Zero is also going to get one. Very obviously, very easily. But, again, how soon? Because the game comes out in, like, what, two months from now? So... I want to, I'd rather a demo sooner rather than later, not just because I want to play the game, but obviously for a myriad of issues that um, I'll actually be talking about now. I think it would be in Sparking Zero's best interest to obviously have an online beta to address the online connection, gameplay improvements, and potential bug fixes. Now again, we don't want to have a Xenoverse 2 where the online alone basically kills all the hype and enjoyment of the game. That would suck a lot. And while Xenoverse 2 did have a demo, and then it still ends up being the game it was, Xenoverse 2's main issue is the fact that it had so many DLCs that basically did just turn the game into like a clogged toilet of online connectivity. The game honestly used to connect way better back in the day, alongside the fact that there were like less game-breaking bugs back in the day, as well as less things to exploit. But in general, the game's connection was a lot better back in the day, way before they added the content city TV, and all these DLCs and all these expert missions and all these raids. And it seems like trying to operate all those things at the same times have just made Xenoverse 2 servers just so sort of like backed up for lack of a better word. So again, I'd like an online netcode to obviously get past this issue. Maybe they'll actually learn from Xenoverse 2 that I, every once in a while you should eventually like, you know, call, call the plumber and just, you know, unclog that thing real quick sometimes. Gameplay improvements is another thing I'd like to see. Again, keep in mind, there are a lot of people who are fans of the Tenkai Chi series, me included, who do not actually like a lot of the stuff in Sparking Zero, despite the fact that Sparking Zero seemingly does everything extremely well. There are people who are fans of Tenkai Chi 2, who don't like how slow, quote-unquote, Sparking Zero feels in comparison, and then there are people who are Tenkai Chi 3 fans, who are thinking Sparking Zero feels too quick, 
etc etc there are so many differences and then you have people like me who i don't mind the game speed but there are just very minor things that bug me again i would prefer beam clashes didn't look the way they did in sparking zero i think they look actually like bad in comparison to how they looked in the previous games not even like okay or like decent they're just like they're just not for me again let me know what you guys think about beam clashes or gameplay speed in the comment section down below right because again tenkaichi 2 and tenkaichi 3 actually do play very very differently i still need to go back and replay tenkaichi 2 because i haven't played that since it came out on the wii basically after tenkaichi 3 came out i just stopped playing too so i haven't i haven't played tenkaichi 2 in ages i want to experience that game again because a lot of people who have played spocking zero have said it's much closer to tenkaichi 2 than it's to tenkaichi 3 and um that should probably be the game you practice if you actually want to play spocking zero 2 so again i would like to see some gameplay improvements especially because when they actually do release a beta um, they can actually take a large community-wide uh, scale of feedback rather than the few people who attend at the expos or etc etc right again i'm not saying that the voices of the few don't matter obviously but there's a lot of people who are just there to play the game like over and over and over again uh, I, that would be me by the way if i went there but um yeah there's uh i think i think they could generally just get more from having a beta that maybe lasts like a weekend or something and then just collect like information from like a survey afterwards right it's it just like two days really I, th I think that's enough to satiate all of us right let me know how long you guys would like a beta to last with Barking zero i know some of you are going to say it shouldn't be a beta it should be an online demo and i should be able to have it until the game comes out because <laughs> yes we do want to play dragon ball sparking zero but let's try and keep it realistic in terms of what we think bandai can like manage we have seen a few bugs when it comes to sparking zero as well we have some like again people think a lot of the beams bending do look a bit wonky there are some beams that bend way too hard and way too far to get people and that's fair we've also have seen the return of the xenoverse 2 you're in the middle of comboing someone then for some reason the combo just drops even offline keep in mind when these gameplay demos are happening they are playing at like a booth against the cpu so it's basically offline connection there are just instances of combos actually just doing a dragon ball Xenoverse 2 and just dropping in the middle of you attacking someone so that is obviously a bug because there's no reason that should be happening especially when the game isn't being played online so there's no like netcode issues to go for anything like that i think i'll include the camera issues of the past as a bug as well because again i think it's more so them just not polishing up that tiny bit of section of the game but when you think about it the camera in this game is kind of insane if people go too high or too low you basically actually can't see them anymore without also like leveling up your height or leveling down your height until the camera model can eventually see them right and i can get pretty scary when you think about how beams curve in this game someone could be all the way above you all the way beneath you and then fire an ultimate attack beam straight up at you and because the beam would also track you cannot see either the person or the projectile and that is terrifying to think about either way i think this will be a good place to end the video again you guys let me know what you personally think about dragon ball sparking zero demo slash beta in the comment section down below i do believe it'll be in their best interest to release and not just again to keep the player satisfied but also for the game's actual health seeing these issues way before the game actually releases would do them good because a lot of people who are gonna buy sparking zero and launch if they go online and then the online is not good they'll avoid it pretty much for the rest of the time it's there so they don't want to have like again you don't want to do a xenoverse 2 and have the online be the most unsatisfying part of the game but have it be also most of the end game content don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as that greatly supports the channel and i think that'll be it love you all hope you all enjoyed and i will see you all next time take care and uh peace